everyone before this video starts i want to give a brief announcement to a new host that is joining us here on nerd talk this is Haley. she will be joining us from here on out on pretty much every single episode that you will be seeing on nerd talk Haley, i'm going to give you the floor go ahead and introduce yourself real quick Hi, as Nick said, I'm Haley. I'm um, 18. I play a lot of video games as like a hobby, and I like to watch a lot of movies. And um, like, I'm just I'm a nerd. <laughs> simple, simple <laughs> explanation. As simple, to what simple is, explanation. But... I like a lot of like things that like video games and like Marvel movies, which is like an outlet for a lot of stuff in my life that I like like to push away so like this is going to be really fun i'm very excited to be doing this from here on out so i hope you guys enjoy this episode with spider-man nyc and like i said this is um Haley's first ever episode first ever podcast too so yeah enjoy <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to Nerd Talk, the internet show where we take a deep dive into all things nerdy, including movies, games, comics, manga, etc, etc. Starting today off, we are welcoming another guest onto the podcast with Spider-Man MIC, otherwise known as Jeremy. He's a social influencer on both TikTok and Instagram. He does Spider-Man cosplays and you can catch him playing Spider-Man and Spider-Man every hour set to release later this year. Jeremy, welcome to the show, man. It's great to have you here, buddy. Hey, thank you for having me. And you're Nick, and this is Haley. Nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you, man. Um, getting right into it, just, you know, how are you feeling? How's everything going in your life right now? Um, I'm, I'm feeling uh, pretty good. Uh, me and Andres, ABC Cosplays, uh, shot something for him this morning. So that was an early, Ooh. early shoot at the park. But it's a beautiful day today, so, um, in New York, which mm -hmm. is lovely to get a break from the cold. <laughs> um, dude, I'm in Michigan. So, I got destroyed over here. So, <laughs> but, yeah. I live in the south, so it's very warm here all the time. Yeah, always, always nice. <laughs> I'm from North Carolina, so I know what that's like. I'm from South Carolina, like Myrtle oh, Beach. that's amazing. Yeah. All right, well, Haley, you want to get started with the first question? Yeah. Okay. So, what got you into the realm of cosplay, and more specifically, like Spider-Man cosplay? Um, thank you for the question. Love this question. Um, it's, uh, it's always been a thing that's been, um, you know, a part of my life. I think Spider-Man in general. And, um, I started, uh, it wasn't actually the, I mean, if you're excluding, like, dressing up as the character as a kid from cosplay, oh, no. my first, <laughs> you don't exclude. <laughs> no, I, I mean, kept I, that in. I got pictures yeah. of Spider-Man when I was four years old. I was dressed up. <laughs> right on yeah i mean i guess when i was like making a conscious de old enough to make a conscious decision that i'm gonna dress like a you know like a character um instead of you know it being playing with my my younger brother um it was after i graduated high school um i loved i loved the movies growing up i played the video games or the comic books um and i just think it was just look like peter parker like <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you um yeah, so it was something that I, I've always related to the kid, you know, like, uh, brown hair, got, like, I'm not gonna say I got bullied, but, like, there were, there were people bigger than me in, mm. in school that, you know, if, if you're small going through, uh, they always pick on the little guy. Yeah, yeah, so there, there was things like that, and then I, I just related to a character to, uh, he always had a good heart and always wanted to do the right thing, even if he didn't, um, you know, even if he messed up, he would always try to would have that um, middle ground or that true north and always follow that path. But uh, yeah, after high school, I think that's what I wanted to uh, get into. And I had the opportunity to get a suit that I really liked, really wanted for cheaper than what the website usually um, sells them for. Um, so freaking my lucky, man. I was so that's... mad. Uh... I know. 
and, and that's what I have to tell people. It's like, I'm sorry, I, I got lucky um, because I was just following these pages on Facebook and Instagram because it was something that I was just following for a while. I was like, I want to talk about, you know, uh, during high school, I think that's when like Civil War was coming out for me and, um, you know, things of that nature. So like Spider-Man was into the MCU and I was like, like it reignited, even though I was a fan of the Andrew Garfield movies, like that reignited like a passion for Spider-Man because everybody was talking about like, What's he going to be like in the MCU? Homecoming's coming out, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's something I was sort of following, like, uh, groups and pages, and they all had, like, these cool costumes, and I was like, man, I want one like that. So I found pages that, like, made costumes, and I was following them for a while, and they put up a, you know, a sale. And I was like, my gosh, these are normally $600. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me, let me, let me yoink yeah. one real quick. <laughs> let me and, like, that. It's a it's it's a it's a funny story because I used a I, I had to justify the purchase for myself because even though it was like 130, which is much cheaper, it was still like you know I didn't have a job yet. I was just like so I was using my savings that I got when I turned 18, I believe. My grandfather would like give me a hundred dollars every year until I was 18, and then I could actually own that money. So I had a couple like you know thousand dollars to like start a savings account. And the first thing I did was, like, you know, buy Bought a Spider-Man, Spider-Man costume. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like, Justified purchase. I was like, I think I could use this to get the money back at some point. Um, so, that was, uh, what's up, Nora? That's okay. This is Nora, everybody. She's coming Hi. in. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, wait, is that who plays Gwen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, hi! Gosh. Hi! <laughs> I was like, wait, why does she look familiar? I was like, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah man. Girlfriend Nora. Oh, but yeah, cool. I justified it in my head. I was like, I think I can make this money back um, through doing like birthday parties or events or stuff like that. And um, I don't like charging people all the time, but right. like birthday parties is one thing that I'll like. I'll be like, yeah, I need, I need a couple couple bucks for this. Um, but I, I'll do charity events for free and stuff like that, but it was just something I got so passionate about. I think, like, I remember doing events and, like, parents would, like, give me money, and I'm at, like, a charity event, and I'm like, please don't give me money in front of your kid, like, I'm, I'm Not doing like this. That, but it's just like, yeah, it's like a charity yeah. event. Don't yeah. send that money to me, send that money to the charity, like. That's... I'm here to support them, yeah. yeah. Um, sure. But yeah, it was just something that I had a lot of fun in. Um, and so there was another sale. So my second suit was actually on sale as well. Um, so I got lucky again. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then um, what happened uh, after... I know this is, a, this is a long, long story. No, just, dude, keep going, man. It's been, it's been years. Um, so I had uh, wanted an original costume that I never saw before. Like... Or I never saw people cosplay before. I wanted something that was just me. Like, I'm the only one with this suit. Because everybody was doing Tasm 2. Everybody was doing the Stark suit from Homecoming. And I was like, you know what? I want to, like, you know, I want to stand. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I was, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man is my, like, favorite cartoon, like, as a kid. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah was my year but um yeah so that that came out and i was like i want i want that suit but i want to give it a um i'm gonna put a picture on screen right now for the viewers that are watching yep. so they can look at it um so i wanted that suit but i wanted it to have a live action quality and st- because it's a 2d show mm-hmm. i wanted to have 3d elements so you know it was going to cost me a pretty penny to add like the hexagon pattern or the the puffy paint or the embossed emblem um, or add shoes, but all that stuff I felt like brought it from 2D to, uh, you know, three dimension. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it costs around 660, Damn. which, and then the face shell alone was like 130. So it was like around an $800 suit. Um, that's but, I, that I can't. That was one thing I wanted to bring up to you about because <laughs> Spectacular Spider Man holds a special place in my heart too. John Bur- yeah. John Burbank is like. Or not John Burbank, Josh Keaton is, like, one of my all-time favorite Spider-Men of all time. So, yeah, when I saw... Because I actually... I followed you before, like, Lotus and everything. Before even Nerd Talk. I had just been following you because I thought your cosplays were cool. And I loved the face shell. The face shell is what got me. Because it's just such a perfect rendition of what you saw in the show. Uh, (laughs) Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, there were elements that I wanted to take from the show. But also, I wanted it to be my own thing. So, I did a lot of research. And that's... Something that I feel 
uh, you know, when people ask me where I get it, I'll always give the information I can, but sometimes there's just information that isn't around anymore. Right. Like, there's just not the, like, the face show is one of those things, like, people ask where I got it, I'm like, his name is, <laughs> like, like, his name is Prop Logic, but, uh, he's retired, like, he doesn't do it anymore, so you, you can't really get it. Um, but yeah, so, it was, it, it cost a lot of money, but I sold the first suit I got on sale, to be able to afford it, and then, you know, that justification that I made the first time I purchased it kept going. I was like, you know, if I spend more on a suit, like, maybe I could get more events and, like, mm -hmm. make more money, you know? It, mm -hmm. I was just always trying to be like, the loop I'll make money back. But I've had such a blast, and I've met all of my, like, close friends through this, like, even running into them at Comic-Con, like, that's how it all started. Right. Um, was I, I went to Comic-Con with, uh, with my girlfriend, Nora, in 2018, and I had followed all these guys. I was just a fan. Like, I had followed them on Instagram, and I was just, like, watching them from my my mom's, uh, my, my bedroom at my mom's house. Um, and then I was like, I came to New York to go to Comic-Con, and that's when, like, Andres and Eunice and, you know, uh, you know, all them, they just, like, walked by. And I was like, I yelled Andres' name. I was like, Andres! Um, and then we got, like, a few pictures um, and stuff like that, but, you know, flash forward like four years later and that's like that's my close friends group so it's just such a that's an insane whirlwind but oh, you yeah. know how a passion for a character has like you know taken all of us it's changed your life yeah yeah, yeah. yeah man so. i i feel the same exact way because I, I came from a standpoint where i followed eunice okay because eunice is the person i'm gonna just because i make fun of you on the internet so much <laughs> i really do <laughs> I, I, I I talk so much shit about Eunice, but truth be told, I've followed that guy since 2014. You know, yeah. I, I've been the biggest nerd of that guy. I've followed him for his flashbacks. I've followed him for pretty much anything superhero related. So yeah. when I did the show with him, oh my god, I was shitting bricks. I was like, there's no <laughs> way this is going to work. And like, we've talked yeah. a lot more since after the show's end, like after his episode. And it just, it's so weird, like that idea that, you know, that's possible, you know? Yeah. It's a crazy yeah. thought. Yeah. Uh, Haley, you want to go? Uh, second question? Yeah. Go or... For it. Okay. Okay, so was there any other character that you wanted to give a chance, or was it, like, just Spider-Man from the beginning? I actually... St and this is a funny story, because I actually ran into it when I got hacked, like, two weeks ago. Oh, my God, dude. I remember... <laughs> I was trying to get my account back, and somehow I got logged into my first cosplay account, and I had no that page even existed. And I deleted all the posts because I'm madly embarrassed now. <laughs> but I was like, I was like back in that, and I had I had a Joker, and I had an Eleventh Doctor before I got a Spider Man costume. Um, you won't see those. Oh come on! <laughs> But I did, I still do have, like, the Heath Ledger, um, you know, hexagon shirt and the, the orange, or the, the green vest and, you know, the purple jacket. And then I have, you know, all that stuff. And then I had, you know, the doctor's red bow tie and his sonic screwdriver and a brown um, overcoat. So I did have two characters. I was just, like, very passionate about, like, you know, whatever I was a fan of, I was, like, I... I wanted to act when I was, and I still kind of do, I, I still mm -hmm. enjoy it, but I had wanted to act out of high school, so that was, like, the way I got to express it was to through um, characters I really enjoyed. Um, so, but Spider-Man is the one that, it was, like, a no-brainer to me, so. Yeah, yeah, it's completely understandable. I would definitely think that Spider-Man is probably one of those characters that, you know, obviously most people relate to him, and obviously everybody believes that spider-man you know could be the character that kind of pulls you out of that f sort of funk that you're in and everything like that so it's completely understandable why you picked them i i i it doesn't change the fact that you look just like like i picture I, peter parker and your face pops that's, up yeah uh, Thank like, you. It's exactly him <laughs> seriously it's scary like i've like i've literally had like ideas for like spider-man scripts and spider-man because i'm you know i'm a screenwriter and i love to do that sort of thing and you know i've pictured you know how i want to do it and you uh john burbank who played spider-man in the ps4 game mm. and andrew garfield they're like the three people that keep popping in my head when it comes to like writing a spider-man story 
So it's just yeah, you you fit the you fit the role, my guy. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but getting right, get into Spider Man every hour because I kind of want to discuss that a little bit. What is something that you can like? What's what's the general premise that you can tell us about Spider Man every hour? Um, the general premise is just this. Um, I kind of explain it as like a, a peek through. Like it's just kind of you're looking through a peephole at this window. I'm not trying to do an like a arc from the comics. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make a long story shorter. It's very much like that feeling of you going to the comic book store, you pick up an issue you know nothing about, and you read it, and that's the end. Like that's like you don't, you know, it's not a, to be continued. It's like that is the. It's a short, simple, sweet story. So you're kind of looking at this window of Peter Parker, like if you picked up one of the, you know, original stories. Yeah, yeah, comics, and you just read it, you enjoyed it, you soaked it in, and you're like, wow, that's a that's an amazing character. That's kind of what I'm going for here. That's why, um, you know, I market it as such. But it's just kind of a look into basically this moment is what I've pinpoint before what I like to say when like when like shit hits the fan in in the comics. I don't know if I can cuss on YouTube, yeah, but whatever. You can, yeah, you can cuss. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, you can cuss. All right. Um, but that moment where you know things start happening and like you know he finds out Harry is a uh, Green Goblin and he uh, Captain Stacy meets his demise and then later Gwen Stacy meets her demise. So it's like right before these things start hitting him back to back to back. The only real thing that like that has happened to Peter has been Uncle Ben, so that's the window we're looking at. And he's like, he's very confident in himself. Like nothing. Like after Uncle Ben, he you know he decided with great power comes great responsibility. That's what he's going to do. So he's confident as Spider Man, but doesn't know how to separate the two. It's a juggling act that he's having a, a very hard time doing, but he's not aware that he's having a hard time doing it. I think that's such a like mm-hmm. Peter Parker thing oh, yeah. to be like so confident in something thinking you got the world on your shoulders and you're rocking it and like things are falling apart like without you realizing it mm-hmm. so that's kind of what the story is is like he's very he's at a point where he's very confident as Spider-Man very happy with what he's doing as Peter but people aren't happy with him if that makes sense um, yeah. so Gwen is Gwen doesn't know that he's Spider-Man, and she's like, you know, the questions of where are you going, like, why do you show up with bruises, like, you know, these these questions why that, you, like... Why are you showing I, up with your ass beat, Peter? What <laughs> happened? <laughs> like, these, these concerning, like, um, and then, like, you know, she starts questioning uh, his love for her, because, like, he's disappearing, he's not there as Peter, and she doesn't know she, he's Spider-Man, so it's, like, such a such a tricky thing, and I always tell people, I think that Peter and Gwen, even if Gwen didn't die in the comics, would not work out together because Peter was never honest with her about being Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, so that's that's sort of what it's about. Is and by the uh, time that he was honest with her, it was kind of too late. It was yeah. a little late. You already, you already yeah. said you can't go into a relationship with that foundation. Like you have to. That's why him and MJ do work. Is because she knew from the get go and like accepted it. He yeah. never gave Gwen the opportunity to accept it. Right. You, when you lie on top of lie, like it gets it gets very hard it to up. like. Yeah, and it gets hard to recover. It becomes, from. It becomes a poison. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's where it's at. So there's a it's a fun little um, look, and you know there's still it's not it's not going to be you know, draining or whatnot. It's going to have those fun Spider-Man moments. Mm. Um, but it's also going to be juxtaposed against those somber Peter moments as well. So I think uh, that's uh, how I would describe it. Right. Yeah, for sure. So, like, what out of all the Spider-Man suits that you own, like, which one is your favorite? It would have to be the most expensive, so it would have to be spectacular because um, that one was... It was made by me um the the ones i got on sale not a lot of people know this because they'll ask me questions about what i did to it i didn't do a single thing to the costumes i got on sale they came as is because they were cheap um um, and they still look amazing like i'm very lucky that they still look phenomenal Uh, 
but yeah, the spectacular because I got to do you know my measurements to exact. I got to tweak colors. I got to add everything like you know, um, and it, it's a project I think I'm still working on. Like I'm still looking at other face shells like um, or different lenses and stuff or you know what if i could design my own web shooters for it and stuff like that so it's that still would be cool yeah that'd be really that'd things be i'm looking amazing looking. <laughs> uh well bouncing off of spider-man every hour another film project um you know obviously uh you are aware of spider-man lotus and you yeah. are aware of everything that's going on there um I don't want to, you know, make this episode all about Lotus because obviously Lotus is a whole other project and I do not want to be keep known as Lotus guy. So I'm going to just try and skip off this as fast as possible. But what was it like being with the cast and crew when they were filming Lotus in New York? It was uh, a blast. Um, there were a lot of different personalities that just kind of like meshed very well. Um, and I think, you know, those people were, uh, you know, nervous to meet us as much as we were nervous to meet them, which is cool. Um, but yeah, it was such a blast. And I think Gavin is uh, such an amazing person and thinker and director. Um, so just seeing his vision come to life and um, is inspirational, mm -hmm. um, to say the least. But uh, yeah, so first day they got here, they helped me on every hour. And then... So Gavin and Warden and Tuan and Mariah, and, you know, the whole crew were on my set. And that's that was stressful for me because that's the first time as a director, I guess, <laughs> I was like, I was in charge of like, you know, almost 20 people plus props plus, you know, a location. So but it was it was kind of nice to have them there knowing that they were also like we were learning off of each other. Like I was. I'm glad Gavin gets to see how I get to do it. And then, like, I can watch him and, like, pick up on things that he... You know, you it's kind like of... Like, add it into each other's project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it, and just, like, filmmaking in general, we're not professional. So, like, every experience is a learning experience. Um, so, they were on my set, and we got, we got everything we needed done that day, which is a blessing, and all thanks to, you know, them. And Tuan was such a big help with that. Uh, organizing and of all course, that of course to it was the fucking organizer of course she was the organizer <laughs> <laughs> of I, I, course. like the, the mother of the literally of the dude she came on she came on the show i don't know if you watch it but she came on the show and like had the nicest like living space and then she was like showing us her comics and had like this like nice assorted <laughs> box i'm like what the heck? like i thought i was a clean freak but <laughs> oh real. my god yeah. She's, she's intense, but she gets the job done. She's a very oh, yeah. helpful. But, uh, yeah, so they, they did that, and then uh, we wanted to take a break. Like, they had a few days before Lotus shooting even began. They were getting settled in New York, and I was like, you know, it would be a blessing if you guys can come and help me on my set, and they did, and they accepted. So after that, after we wrapped, we, you know, bought a couple pizzas, headed out to the park, and just, like, you know, got to know each other. And I think that that was the majority of, like, the time spent together was, um, was very... Uh, personal and low stakes so it was very nice to get to know these people instead of it just being work 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 mm -hmm. um we were working and we were developing ideas and you know helping each other's films but we were also like becoming um closer to each other and you know building building relationships i don't i don't know if you know like this 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 house that i'm living in two and two and was over last night like her oh, and nora wow are very close friends and i think they just went to a coffee shop that's why nora was in here grabbing something but um yeah so uh lasting friendships i think and we're talking about projects moving forward like you know me and gavin will have conversations about we need to make something together one day or yeah. two and wants to yeah. do a short film and you know so really cool things and it's nice to meet like-minded people um especially when it's like you you all love spider-man like that's just <laughs> yeah that's, that's the cherry on top that's but. the cherry on top man yeah um so like going off your uh spider-man every hour that sounds like really cool i could not imagine being that creative because i'm not <laughs> but like what are some inspirations for spider-man every hour 
Um, I'm still in the process of getting a complete... I don't think it'll ever be complete, actually. Let me rephrase. I think inspirations are constantly coming to me. Mm. Um, like the other day, I was literally... Because I want this opening to stand out. Uh, I want the opening to be like, you're in this. Like, you, you are immersed mm. in this world. So I was watching, um, you know, some... 1960s film openings with like you know they have the credits and they'll have like cool artwork um you know trying to get inspiration from that and then um a few months ago you know i was looking into you know looking into fashion or what the cars were like uh, um you know things like that of that nature so it's very much inspiration comes in all different shapes and shapes. sizes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like so it's like you know inspiration for editing of the film comes from one thing inspiration for look of the film comes from another and then you know obviously i look to uh you know some of the original comic books for the spider-man aspect and also drawing from my own personal experiences and my own relationships um so inspiration is kind of everywhere and i like that um that I can kind of look anywhere and you could pull something positive out of it and you can have something that goes with you into the next project or enhances this one. So it's it's a constant, uh, constant, constant thing. Um, but as far as like, it, to simplify the question, I guess like movies and such. Um, <laughs> movies. <laughs> Where did you get inspiration that? from? Movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, there's, there's, I mean, there's, some of my favorite directors, I think you probably, if you follow my page, you know I love Zack Snyder, and that's oh, yeah. a controversial opinion in the in this. In the Watchmen book. is one of my favorite movies of all time. Amazing. So I think, like, as far as, uh, I think he does a really good job at uh, making you care about the characters with and just... setting a tone. Yeah, yeah, he does it, he does very, and that's kind of, my opening won't look like a Zack Snyder opening, but it's gonna, like... He has really good openings. Mm. He he gets you into the universe like in the first two minutes, and that's something I, I really um admire about his filmmaking style. And then I think Edgar Wright is another one that I like. Oh. He does a lot of like comedy through editing and timing, opposed to verbal mm. comedy. Um, and I think that's a very cool thing to do with a character like Spider Man, like situational comedy opposed to like him always saying a quip um Dude, edgar wright such a phenomenal director i love that man yeah oh my god <laughs> but uh yeah i mean there's a uh, short answer uh, everywhere everything inspires me if if you look hard enough <laughs> you have a lot of a wide variety of inspiration yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, if I can ask real quick, only because you said earlier that the inspiration behind Spider-Man Every Hour also came a lot from the 60s comic books, and that's kind of where you're drawing a lot of your, like, the look and the aesthetic of the story. Why else, if you can explain, why else did you choose the 1960s as a year place for Spider-Man Every Hour? This wasn't actually me. This was, um, the, uh, co-writer, uh, Zach, mm. who is Atlanta based who is the one who like cast me in this project um so we had tried to do a few versions of this thing and um you know it's been going we've been trying to get something off the ground for about three years now since I moved to New York so sorry for the wait <laughs> I think it, it has evolved into what it is now that we're very proud of but yeah that was his idea and originally he threw it back to the to the 50s it was like 1958 and I was like well, Spider-Man was invented to the 60s, so can we, like, throw it up a decade or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, and that, that that stuck. And I think it was such an intriguing thing to do because it's... Uh, it's an interesting, very interesting take because just, yeah. like... Yeah, you know, Spider-Man obviously was created in the 60s and, like, you know, the technology of that time was obviously definitely affecting the comic books. So yeah. now that we live in a modern world, it's, it's a lot different to create a version of Spider-Man. So going back to the original... That that's a very interesting mm -hmm. play. It 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 was it was very nice as you know a writer to put yourself in that box because what I had found in my like you know the original scripts didn't have like a like a a period um, set date so I was writing scenes like Aunt May calls Peter on like he texts 
he texts Aunt May, blah, blah, blah. Like, he's using his cell phone a lot. Like, he's answering the phone. As, but it's like, you don't have that technology in the 1960s. Like, the phones yeah. don't exist. So how do I make these characters? So, like, it adds to the to the weight of what's going on. So the plot is, like, you know, Gwen is, there's, there's a, a dinner that Peter's supposed to be at. Um, and Gwen is waiting for him. And Peter can't send Gwen a text. Like, that's not, it's not something like, hey, I'm on my way, I'm going to be a few minutes late, and then Gwen is aware. She's left in this restaurant, not knowing when he's going to show up, and, you know, so it was very fun to write things, like, scenes like that, without an easy way out for the character, um, because of the period. Mm -hmm. um, even things like living conditions were different, again, like, fashion was different, so it was very fun to the come fashion up. fashion was the best part, that's... Uh... <laughs> But, that was, yeah. that's, that's always what stuck out to me, especially even about, like, you know, Lotus. You know, it was just the scenes with, like, the the friggin' white uh, turtleneck and the, the, the yellow blazer. Like, that <laughs> That was, like, I was, like, damn, that is that is classic Peter Parker. That is, like, old school Peter old. Parker. So <laughs> I've always loved that aspect of the, the vintage cars and the vintage clothing and everything like that. But... Yeah, obviously, how do you do that in the modern-day spectrum? How do you put that into a modern-day story of Spider-Man? So you can't really do that unless you were to actually acknowledge that it's, you know, taking place back then. So mm. I have always liked the idea that Spider-Man, a Spider-Man film set in the 60s or a Spider-Man show, whatever, but I've never actually seen it put to screen, so I'm actually really glad that you guys are doing that. Thank you. Yeah, man. Um, like, it's a very amazing, like, approach that you have to doing this film, like, in the 1960s, and I think that it's just, it's so incredible, like, what you're doing. It's it's inspiring, and I <laughs> Thank you so really much. like it. It very is, nice. yeah, it's, it's very, it's it's out there. That's that's the that's the It's different. Part. It's very it's, different. It's not yeah. something, you know, you see all these creators, and not I'm not trying to bash on other Spider-Man, you know, fan film artists or anything like that, but... You know, you see all these different renditions of the same story, of the same character, the same timeline, everything like that. You never really see anything strongly different. And even though this is a Peter Parker story and we've seen a bunch of those, it's something that it's a version of the character that we've never actually come about and that we've ever actually, that we've actually seen unless it was the, you know, written on the comic book page. So it is a very interesting idea. Um, what were some ideas that you wanted to put into Spider-Man Every Hour that you can tell us about, um, but that didn't unfortunately make the drawing board? Um, I'm trying to think because it's been so many different things at this point. <laughs> I'm like, you know, trying to separate the versions. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty happy with where it's at right now. I think... There's something that we will see mm -hmm. if we can do, but it's not something I've thrown out the window yet. Right. Um, but everything else, we like, we have two more two more live action scenes to shoot with mm -hmm. Spider Man, um, and I'm waiting waiting for the weather to not be. Uh, today is a good sign for me. That means I could <laughs> get the ball. But um, two more live action Spider Man scenes that I'm looking forward to, and they were added maybe two months ago mm. um but they're very very integral to the to the core of the story because there's been things that uh i guess the things that were thrown out the window were things that wouldn't have made it as good as it is mm -hmm. at this point so the things that are gone now is basically we were going to have you know I was going to be Spider-Man in a few, you know, shots, but we were going to do VFX heavy for the action portion. Mm. But so if we threw anything out of the window, it was that. And I was like, I want to put on the suit more and be on top of moving vehicles right. and try to learn, you know, fight choreography. So I think that's, that's the, the stuff we threw out the window is stuff that would have made it simplified. Mm -hmm. And we're getting a little, you know, we have to learn new tricks and new techniques to get uh, the rest of this. What does the uh, the choreography look like for this film? Because obviously Spider-Man is a very tough character to kind of nail in fighting because it's either practical, CGI, or a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to nail that idea. So what would the choreography look like for that kind of character? I have a few videos saved on YouTube and Instagram of you know, these kind of jujitsu and kung fu 
fighting moves because I think I, I'm very inspired by like like the takedowns I think is what we're going for instead of an all out like battle we're doing like because the, the villain isn't like somebody who's going to really pose a threat to Spider-Man so the fight scenes are just going to be like like a PS4 takedown if you will um, but I have these videos those things. <laughs> yeah 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 J like jujitsu moves where it's like you know like self defense classes sort of Mm. Um, where you, you, you block a few hits and then you do some crazy move and the, the, the opponent is somehow like in Take your, in your, yeah, 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 that's, that's sort of, um, what we're going for here because, um, again, it's not the focus of, of every hour, uh, by any means, but I did want to, you know, throw something in for people that enjoy that aspect of, of the, the character. character. Yeah. Mm. Hey, but you the anything you want to ask? for swinging is... Mm. It's phenomenal. Yeah. I've seen snippets yeah. of it. I've seen what you you showed, and yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna. It put sounds that on really too. cool. I actually am interested in watching this. But um, like, what was the story that made you realize that like you wanted to create like a Spider-Man like inspired film? Like, have you always had like a knack for making like a movie when you were younger, or like? Um. Yes, but I didn't realize it. I guess I was just telling somebody the other day. I think yesterday, actually. I was. Uh. You know. I grew up skateboarding. I don't know if you could see there skateboards. Yeah. Like, skateboards. Nah, yeah. 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 I, I grew up skateboarding, so that's something that I was constantly like. Got doing a longboard right over here, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was doing it with my friends and my brother, and um, I what's very interested and in, I think like the goal in your head when you're a kid and you're skateboarding is to be like, how do I get a skateboard and wheels and trucks for free? How do I get clothes for free? How do I get these shoes? And you know that the pros become like sponsored and they get that stuff for free. So as a skateboarder, my mentality was like, if I film us doing cool stuff, people will want to sponsor us and give us free things. Um, so that's what I started doing. I started like filming all of my friends and, you know, my brother would sometimes film me, but I would, you know, we'd skate six hours a day and I would have a camera in my book bag. Um, and then I would go home and make videos for all of us. Um, and you could find these YouTube channels. I don't know. It's like, I don't uh, know. I'm not saying the name. Do it. <laughs> like, say it. <laughs> say it. <laughs> but, um, they're, they're embarrassing. But, um, yeah, so I was always like editing and making these, uh, videos and then, I would uh, eventually, like, make montages for me and my friends hanging out. Like, my first trip to New York is documented, um, and it's on my YouTube channel. Um, so, I guess, a spider like, filmmaking in general didn't hit me until I, I lived here um, and saw how interested in it I was because, like I said, I wanted to be an actor. That's why I moved up to New York. And then I did a few auditions, and I would receive scripts or screenplays, and I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm the person that can be in service to everybody's story, because I'm so passionate about telling my own. Um, so it was very hard to me to be like, I'm going to dedicate six months of my life to this other person's work, when there were things inside of me that wanted to be, you know, brought to light it's like you have your own stories so i think filmmaking has been an outlet for me to do that and then i realized that i was like oh i always have a camera with me and i'm always recording videos so it was like a no-brainer and it's like been a part of my life for over you know 12 years probably but it was just something that was like always like oh what do i want to be what do i want to do i don't know what i want to do with my life and it's like there's a camera around my neck while i'm saying that and they're like all right but yeah um, a Spider-Man story in specific, you know, always been something that has been in the back of my head. It's never, you know, life happens and focus on work or school or paying rent. But, you know, if given the opportunity, of course, you know, that's something I would love to portray a character that's meant so much to me um, and try to tell a story. So I think, like, it was bound to happen. Eventually, I don't want to say like it was know. inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like Thanos. But um, <laughs> um yeah, so it just uh, you know, like I said earlier, Zach asked me on Instagram, and I was like, yeah, of course, like I would love to do that. And we've gone through, you know, like I said, different versions of this thing, and it has evolved into you know what we're looking at putting out now. But it's been a collection of 
you know, and I think everything that everybody does as humans, it's like a collection of, you know, everything you've done in your life meets at a certain point, and that's like, and then it begins to blossom. Mm. Um, so, you know, skateboarding 12 years ago with my friends led me sitting to here being talking Spider-Man. <laughs> to being Spider-Man. Yeah, to being Spider-Man. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's, just, it's just crazy to think about, and I've, I've, uh, it's been such a great and rewarding experience, I think, because these are things that I look at now. And everything I look at, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, ways that they could be used in my future. So, like, making every hour now might introduce me to something that I use on this film. 20 years down the line... Maybe I'm in Hollywood. Man, I'm going to see, see this man in the MCU. No. For real. And, and I'm, I'm just like, I, I have the tools. Like, I did this 20 years ago. Like, you know, a problem a problem arises, and it's like, wait a minute, I did this on every hour. You know, or like, you know, I did this while I was skateboarding at 13 years old. So it's like everything you do kind of like get, equips you for what's next. Um, so everything that coalesced. Mm-hmm. So, like, even this podcast for you, you, like, blow up one day, and you become, like, some, like, this is where you start, like, it's just such a humbling thing, but, like, you are learning things, like, as we speak, every podcast you do, you are better than the last one, and that's just such a, such a cool thing in everything. Compliment, appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to say, you're a very well-spoken and, like, inspirational individual that, like, I can see a lot of kids looking up to one day, and like that's and it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, he literally <laughs> dresses up as Spider Man. Like it's a no brainer. He's gonna be he's gonna be big one day, and I can already see that. Yeah, man. I, you know, I like I said, I followed you for a while. You know, you. I obviously, I I think of you as a good friend now. But you know, it's it was been it's been a crazy thing. You know, seeing because I've seen you grow, man. You are you're you're getting bigger. You're you're growing there. <laughs> And like it's, it's 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 going good. I'm happy for you, man. Thank you. Not a problem, Thank man. You. But with that being said, I'm gonna ask the final question on our end, and we're gonna go to the fan ones. This final Great. question is something that nerd talk fans around the world will kill me if I don't ask because I ask it every time I do an episode. But I've twisted it a little bit, you know, for Spider-Man every hour. Uh, okay. If you could describe Spider-Man every hour in one word or less. How would you do it, and why? Or less? How do I do that? <laughs> exactly. My point, exactly. <laughs> Fine, we'll do three words. Three words. How about that? <laughs> um, all right, let me think. Yeah, I did this with Lotus, and if I didn't do this for every hour, they would kill me. <laughs> Let's say retro as the Re- first word. Retro, okay. Bro. Um, somber. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, fun. Is fast pace one word? Is that a dash in there? <laughs> that's, <laughs> a tec- that's a technicality. <laughs> that's a technicality. I don't know about that one. It's not a word. Fun, fast paced, and what was the first one you said? Retro. 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 Oh, All right. I see it. I see, I see it. it. I see it. Well, yeah. Of course. Very. The retro one kind of day giveaway right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Getting into the fan questions right now. Uh, the first one is coming from Sensational. Sens- uh, sorry, Sensational Webhead. Uh, he didn't actually ask a question. He just said, "I don't have any questions. I already asked him what I wanted to the other day. Just let him know oh. that he's a legend, and I say thank you." That's Sean. Well, That's- thank you, Sean. There you go. <laughs> Another one. Another one's from a from a random person named uh, Mariah Brooklyn. Uh, does Jeremy make his own chicken nuggets from scratch? Um, I in the past, I I like experiment. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, this past year, I've been into like deep frying, <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I will watch. Is that why she's like, asking this question? She knows. <laughs> Mariah knows. My uh, my story, I think. But, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll eat a meal, and then I'll put on, like, a chef from YouTube, and I'll, I'll like, watch his videos, and then I'll be like, that's what I'm making next. Dude, binging with Babish? <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I started, like, you know, buying my own um, uh, chicken thigh or chicken breast, you know, cutting them up. I've done Chick-fil-A nugget replicas, and oh, I've done McDonald's. 
bastard. Oh my gosh, I had Chick Fil A last night. Don't uh, tempt me for more. I need. Mean, so, I'll, I'll make my own sauce too. Like the Chick Fil A. The thing to do to replicate for me is I pull the freaking uh, fried <laughs> bread off the McDonald's nuggets <laughs> and just look. I'm a chef. I did that. Like. <laughs> it, it's it's something to learn though, but it has been fun to experiment with. But I will say, you waste a lot of oil. I, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, deep this frying is a like show now. <laughs> it's literally yeah. just a lot of oil. I used to have a deep now it's a cooking segment. <laughs> the, the, the cooking just, session of Nerd Talk. Be disappointed. <laughs> be disappointed. Upload 25 minutes of me making deep fried chicken nuggets. Oh my so god, you. dude. Oh I'll, have my that, god. I'll have that in the background when I go to bed at night. Just like, my <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> might see cooking for an hour. Wow. <laughs> Uh, another question from Namir says, simply asking, planning any more films by chance? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, they're, they're constantly, you know, running through my head. I have a big, big version of the short film I did for school, Octagon. Um, there's a, you know, a feature version that I'm still writing bits and pieces or adding to or fleshing out. But this idea has been in my head for about two years. And I think the, uh, the short film was very fun to do, and it was fun to learn techniques and work with actresses and um, uh, different sets and stuff like that. But I would eventually want to try to tackle that. But that's a bigger project. Um, as far as smaller ones go, I have one um, that I'm currently in development, uh, and I've posted storyboards about it, but you know I haven't announced it at all. But it's a it's one about um, I was just telling my brother because we grew up. Um, together obviously he's my brother why would i say that um, but, <laughs> yeah. um yeah so my mom was always trying to get us to take like self-defense classes because like like i said before we we grew up like smaller we were we were smaller boys i mean my brother's huge now if you see him but um yeah she always wanted us to take like self-defense classes so this one is uh, about a mom seeing her son get picked on and she wants to sign him up for Taekwondo classes. Mm. Um, and then he goes and he's training, you know, and he's doing this, this cool stuff. But then at the end, like she realizes that like, cause he doesn't use it when he's faced with the bully again, he doesn't use what he learned at Taekwondo and instead he shows kindness, um, to this, uh, person who was a bully and, you know, it changes the, the bully's like attitude towards him. Um, and the mom realizes that it was never about, like, self-defense. Like, this kid's heart is just, like, he's a pure kid. Um, you know, so it's something short and sweet. And I think I want to try out, like, a Wes Anderson look mm. to it. Um, I think it'll be funny. I want it to be a silent film. So it'll have music and you'll hear things, like, you know, you'll have sound effects. But I don't think the characters will speak. I think I want the communication to come from... Um, you know, facial Body expressions. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, that's one. And then, um, like I said, Tuin has a project that, you know, she wants us involved in that she just wrote the screenplay for. So we'll probably do that eventually. Um, so yeah, there's always, always things going around. And then this morning, what I shot with Andres was, uh, for his TikTok, but it's, uh, it was shot in 4k. So it's going to be a a beautiful, oh, a, <laughs> a crispy, um, a cri yeah, fried. <laughs> but yeah, so that's always always something to think about is throwing around. But we're always jumping from each other's projects. The last one we did was Eunice um, school project. So yeah, it's fun. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. We're all in film school, so we're all like lending hands where <laughs> we can. Jumping and How do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's been fun. But yeah, those are a few that I'm thinking about. Nice, man. Uh, another question from H. Taylor. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I apologize if not. Uh, been waiting for this one. Question, what films would you consider your all-time favorites and what f influences your filmmaking style? Um, My all-time favorites, I think Hurt by Spike Jones has always resonated with me. I think it's a very beautiful um, love story. I won't spoil it if nobody on this uh, channel has seen it. Um, but yeah, Spike Jones is a very, um, and I like the story behind the movie as well, about how it's basically Spike Jones making a response to Sofia Coppola's film Lost in Translation. I don't know if um, anybody I, knew that. I did, but they, Translation. Yeah, so they were married in the early 2000s, and they got divorced. And Lost in Translation, nobody is quite sure. She hasn't spoken about it. 
but people feel like it's pulled from her and Spike's relationship, like influence, and I think there's always a bit of the artist in the art. So basically her was 10 years later, Lost in Translation is 2003, her was um, 2013. Her is he the one with Joaquin Phoenix, right? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so he basically, like, this movie is basically in response to another film. Mm -hmm. And that's such just, like, it, it boggles my, like, two directors, like, made movies, like, writing notes to each other. Um, and it's like an apology letter, um, you know, and just, like, how humans grow up and, you know, fall in and out of love. But I'm very, I'm very intrigued by that topic. So another, uh, me and Gavin share one of our favorite films is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, yeah. That's something that, like... I watched right out of high school or like during high school and I was like, yeah, I love this movie. Um, that's another one about love. So there's like, you know, there's a pattern here. But for fun, I, like Man of Steel is one of my favorites just because it means so much to me. I think I, I grew up, my mom loved Superman. And even though she likes, I think, Brandon Routh and uh, Christopher Reeve better, um, I remember like watching Man of Steel with the fir for the first time because she was a Superman fan, and that movie's always been such a big part of who I am. And then, like, you know, Edgar Wright is obviously one of my, my faves, so Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is just Shaun a fun... the Dead. Fun mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Gosh. Um, you know, Hot Fuzz. All of those are Hot just... Hot Fuzz. Cops! <laughs> phenomenal movie. Um, yeah, and I think... I don't know if there's any direct inspiration, because I'm, that's not something I'm aware of when I'm going in to like editing or anything i'm just doing my own thing i think there's if there's any inspiration it's it's completely subconscious and it's you know you know if i'm inspired by somebody i'll be like that's a cool idea but i won't try to mimic it i'll just like you know take it and you know soak it in but yeah so i think i have my own voice and you will see that in every hour but there will be things that you're like it feels it, it'll feel like you know a cohesive film <laughs> i hope mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> awesome man all right well that about does it that that's it right there man thank you <laughs> once again jeremy for coming on man it was such yes, a pleasure thank to have you. you um you guys can go check out spider-man every hour on youtube it'll be releasing later soon do you have a planned release date by chance do you want to announce uh -huh. or keep it in so the wind yeah it's still a you know because you know we had a few release dates and then covid happened and then you know covid happened again and, and I, again and again and again, so, and again. Then, we're done we're, we're just, you know it'll drop one day and you guys will it'll be there it. it'll, just be, it'll there. just be there yeah it'll i'm be excited there. to see this film it's it sounds amazing. very very amazing no pun intended but amazing <laughs> literally spectacular no <laughs> 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 I still have to watch No Way Home. But. Yeah, that was that was one of the questions. Was we were actually going to get your opinions about <laughs> No Way Home, but somebody hasn't seen the film yet, so we can't talk about spoilers on this channel well, unless she is like, not here. <laughs> well, like my like I watch every Spider-Man film that comes out with my brothers, and since I've recently moved, it's like I don't want to see it without them. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm waiting until I move back. I get that. Mm -hmm. You can watch it and then. Pretend to be surprised, that's, dude. That's what I was saying. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I was he like, keeps, he gets mad at me every time I get on and play video games. When he's like, Haley, have you seen Noah Ham? I'm like, no, shut up. And I'm like, dude, at this point, I'm just gonna tell you the movie because I've seen it so many times that I can literally, from yeah. start to finish, tell you what happens. <laughs> like even uh, the little intricate details. I'm getting to that point. <laughs> All um, right, man. I Amazing that you you want to wait, but uh, yeah. So thank you guys for having me. Hey, no problem. Such a thank pleasure. you so much. It was nice meeting you. Nice, nice meeting. You, um, See you I later. love this. SpongeBob. At a boy, you can stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys have a good one. You too, man. You as well. Bye. Have a great day. Before we get started, do you have anything you wanna you wanna say real quick? This I don't know um, if you're also aware. This also goes at the end of the of the video, so. All, all of what you get said, it gets sent to the end of the video. <laughs> Sweet, no worries. Uh, just uh, thank you for having me. Um, uh, it's awesome to be here, and I love doing things like this and uh, chatting with different people about anything. So, right. yeah. yeah. I'm glad to have you, buddy. All right. 
Game started three, two, one.